so we're at the paint table and we're going to paint this guy and hopefully make him look close to that. Now this guy has a yellow tie and I want to change that to a little different. I don't want it to be the same. In fact, I think the yellow is a bit distracting, but if we take that yellow and then dress it up with some polka dots or things like that, it might be better. I think I, I'm thinking of painting this guy red with some white design. We'll see how that goes. So we'll lay that knot to the side. I'm not going to bother with pre-wetting him because I don't really have to worry too much about uh, making sure the paint flows. We're only going to have a couple of colors. Well, I say a couple. We've got white because we're going to put white on his belly. We're going to put white around the hat here and on the ball. We're going to put white on his eyes. I've got a mixture of tangerine and Americana, and I use Americana primarily because I can mix these paints really well. They flow well together. They can be watered down. They can be used thick. Um, and when you mix them together, you generally get a better color when you look at one or two or three different hues. Anyway, I'm going to use a mixture of Tangelo and Orange and Tangerine for the feet and the beak. I've got Soft Black. The Americana makes another one. Uh, glossy black. I don't really like that one as much on this application because it has a tendency to be a little bit too bright, too literally glossy. We're going to use a Santa Red on his hat and possibly his tie and then we're going to use a cool white. Okay, so what I do is I mix my paints really thin. And I say really thin because they're probably going to be one drop or two drops of paint to 10 or 12 drops of water. We'll start with the red because I like getting the red on first. And I don't need a whole lot of paint on there. That's about all I need. Don't need a lot of paint. There's not much on there and we'll water that down with quite a bit of water. I just use a little chemistry pipette I got from the classroom. We had thousands of them. Don't tell my boss I stole that one. They might want their four cents back. And you can see that I've got quite a bit of, wa quite a bit of, of water mixed in there with that paint. I'll give it a good swirl around a few times. Make sure that that water is well and the paint's well mixed. And then I'm going to use the front of these bowls. I got two bowls out here. One I'm going to use to rinse my, my my brushes and the other one I'll use for dipping water in. Anytime I use a brush I always get it wet before I do it. It makes it a little less stiff and I'm just going to go straight into that paint and I'm going to start painting that hat. Oftentimes you get not enough color on there or you get too much and so I'm just going to paint as, as, as well as I can. This chiseled edge brush works really well because I can get that chiseled corner up where I need it to go and it holds a lot of paint. So um, whatever paint brushes you use, whatever makes you comfortable, I'm not one to say go out. You have to go out and buy this brush and you have to go out and buy this particular way of doing it. I like the Americanas. Uh, I use some deco art and then there's a couple specialty colors that I get in a little different brand. But for most of the part, the paints that I use are these deco arts. They work really well and they're not really expensive. You can generally buy them for on sale a dollar, off sale they're a dollar fifty. Uh, local Michael's craft store, art store, we have a local quality art place. And these things, these types of paint work really well. The only other thing I do besides that, I got a little bit of paint splashed over here on my white that I want to get off. I'm just going to get that wet and I'm just going to go over it and dab it until it's prim primarily washed out. I'll go back over it with pretty thick white and make sure that I've covered that up. That's all the red I want right now. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll use a hair dryer to dry it out. I'm not going to do that right now. We may do that a little bit later. The other thing I want to look at as I want to use, you know what? I've decided I am going to go ahead and do that tie in red. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use a smaller brush since it's a smaller piece of the paint of the carving. So I'll just dip right back into that same red and we'll go all the way around. Now I'm going to, I had to be a little careful when I painted the red on the hat because we're going to paint white around it. 
right here it's going to be painted over in black on the, both edges so I'm not so much worried about if I get a little bit of bleed over I'm going to get some because that's the nature of painting with these types of carvings and these types of wood or wood soaks up water and if that paint has a lot of water in it it's going to run almost no matter what you do short of wood burning the edges and I've done that a lot of times sometimes you can wood burn the edges it gives it a nice contrast provides shadow down in the down in the cracks and crevices and it makes it easy to uh, prevent the paint from bleeding over but I don't always do that simply because if you if you don't want a lot of shadows and you don't want a lot of dark spots on your carbon that can that can throw it way off and you'll see how that paint just gets sucked right up into that black again we can prevent that but I'm not going to worry about that right now because we're going to paint that over with the black paint and it's going to it's going to hide it and and I used to have a, worked with a guy that used to say paint hides a lot of sin when you when you're when you're working on cars and I don't know whether that's true on cars but it's certainly true in this case I can have a few not so pristine areas and then I can just paint over them and not have to worry about that although some people will tell you that you don't allow paint to bleed where it's not supposed to go in fact if you take a class with Chris Hammock a carver out of originally from out of Texas now he lives in Cancun Mexico a little island off of there he'll tell you there's painting is really really difficult because you have to remember to put black where black goes and put white where white goes and etc and it's always funny when I hear it and and essentially for your carving that's exactly what you're doing you're putting paint on where paint goes and that's all it comes down to it's not anything more complicated than that so we got the red where we want red is on the hat red is on the tie and we'll let that dry a little bit we're going to move into the feet and the beak because these areas are not touching paint right now if i paint it up here it might get a little bleeding if i paint here it might bleed if i paint here it might bleed this is not going to bleed right now because it's got nothing touching it other than right up under here so i want to mix equal parts of tangelo orange and i'll just get a few drops out of here because i'm not going to need much there's not much of this carving that's going to be utilizing these colors and the equal parts of tangerine and tangelo orange so if you can see down in that well we don't have much in there i'm going to use my little pipette over here my little four set pipette and i'm going to put water in there to cover that completely up i want to make sure my brush is clean from that red and i want to mix that paint up really well oftentimes that looks a little bright out here i might go back into this little red make it just a little bit more orange and actually i want another drop out of there may not be able to see it on the video but it shows up as a little darker orange okay dry this brush off really well and go back in there make sure i don't have too much I'm going to paint right where that beak is. I like that color. I'm going to leave it that color. I'm not going to mix any more with it. Both sides, right at the bottom of the eye. Turn them over and do the bottom. Just like that. We'll do the feet same way I like this little brush because it's small enough to get into some of these tight areas where I can get the paint where it needs to go as Chris says put the orange where the orange needs to go <laughs> I had to come up with my own line for that I don't know that he'd like me using it too much that's his line we'll let him have it So some of you watching me paint it may be like what we used to do in Tennessee when we were bored is watch the corn grow but uh, hopefully you're not too bored watching me paint a little bit and if you're painting along with us good on you good on you 
Okay, got one foot done. Get that other one done. And we've got the feet, and we've got the beak painted. 11 minutes, we're going to stop right there, and we'll come back and we'll paint the black part. And I'll see you next time.